Many people are consumed with people, personalities, hobbies that have become too important to them. For instance, in the 1960s, people were just obsessed with the personality of Elvis. Those girls were all shook up. But as well, later on, it was a group called the Beatles. And here we see how people respond to them. And this even led John Lennon to say some very outrageous and blasphemous things, claiming that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. In which he made a chance remark saying, we are, the Beatles are more popular than Jesus Christ. But he said, um, he said, oh, I don't know what's wrong with the church at the moment. The Beatles are bigger than Jesus Christ, you know. And then we have the Backstreet Boys. What girl that's like 40 years old now didn't go crazy over them? Oh my gosh. Thank you very much. And finally, we have the Jonas Brothers, where people are still going bananas over these boy bands. When people, or activities, or hobbies, or even ideals take precedence over the Lord, or those are idolized, or worshipped, or put in your primary place of passion before the Lord, that is what we call idolatry. We're worshiping something that isn't God, that's man-made. And that is, of course, a sin against God. In Exodus 20, verses 3 to 5, the first two commands given to us by God in the Ten Commandments help us out here. The first commandment is Exodus 20, verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me, in commandment number two, in Exodus 20, verse four and five, we're commanded by God to avoid and put to death idolatry. We're not to worship things or people that are not God. We're not to worship these images that are made or even people who are made in God's image. They're not to be put or worship before God. When we cherish things or people before the Lord, those things become our idol. Now, when I was a child, I just loved hockey. I just loved the Toronto Maple Leafs. And every Saturday night, hockey night in Canada, I would have all my Toronto Maple Leaf cards out and I would be watching and looking at stats and I was just so excited. I wanted to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I wanted to be a hockey player, but it had become so important to me that it had become an idol. And when I had gotten older, I had moved on to another idol because the Maple Leafs always disappoint. I wanted to be a musician. I was a bass player and I lived and breathed music and playing bass. Sometimes I'd play bass for six, seven hours a day. And at the end of it all, it was an idol. And then I realized there was a God who made me. There was a God who created me, not just to follow the Maple Leafs and to play bass. Primarily, God had created me, first and foremost, I should say, to worship Him and enjoy Him. And here I'm just going to talk about why God, the Lord, is worthy to be worshipped. First, the Lord is worthy to be worshipped because He is the only true God who has always existed and always will exist. When we think of the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God was there. He was there before it all. And he was reigning and ruling. And because he's the eternal God, he is worthy to be worshipped. Next, number two, because the Lord created the universe. The Lord created not only the earth, the moon, the whole solar system, but all the galaxies in all of the universe. And, 
Of course, he made us. Psalm 96 verse 5 says, For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. The Lord is the God who created us, and we are to worship him. The gods of the peoples, these false idols, they are nothing. The Lord is the sovereign ruler and creator over the universe. But this brings us to our next point. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20 and 7 verse 29 will help us out here. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20. Surely there's not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. In Ecclesiastes 7:29, See this alone I found, that God made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. We as humans have sought out many schemes, many idols, and we have rebelled against God. We have sinned against God. And that brings us to our fourth point of why we are to worship the Lord. God sent Jesus to deal with our sin. We as humans are not worthy to be worshipped because we are sinners. And we are not eternal. We are only temporal. And we are creatures of our creator. And God graciously has sent his son to deal with our sin. 1 John 4, 9 and 10. In this, the love of God was manifest among us. That God sent his only son that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son. To be the propitiation for our sins. Jesus Christ took upon the punishment of sin that we deserve to bear. That is how God showed his love. His only son was sent to bear the judgment of God. The punishment of God that we as humans rightly deserve to bear. Why should we not worship an athlete? Because they're not God. Why should we not worship or idolize a movie star. They are not God. And their time on earth is short. Why should we not worship a musician? The same thing. They're not God. The Lord made us. He is God. He is worthy of our worship and our idolizing. So idolize and worship and live for Him alone. Our culture promotes a very unhealthy view of idolizing and idol worship. What are you or who are you idolizing? Is it the God who made you? Is it the God who is eternal, who has always existed, who is, will always exist, a God of love who comes and dies in your place in the person of Jesus Christ? Or is it a hobby? Or is it a person? that will always disappoint. Look outside yourself and see the glory of God, the grace of God, and the goodness of God. And worship Jesus Christ, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit alone. Thanks for watching and God bless.